Reykholt is another Uwe Rosenberg gem, in my opinion. Uh, I really, really like Reykholt. Uh, it has uh, some... Uh, it tastes a little bit, if a board game can taste like anything, it tastes a little bit like um, At the Gates of Loyang because it's got the wonderful little wooden vegetables, you're dealing with vegetables. It's got a, a couple of uh, things there that are reminiscent of uh, At the Gates of Loyang, but it's its own game. Okay, and it's easier. It's easier. You can introduce Ray Colt to uh, you know non gamers, and uh, they're gonna you teach them the rules, and they're gonna be fine playing it. It is puzzly. You can play from one to four players. That's right. You can play it solo, and I have a few times. Uh, one to four players, and you'll play it within thirty to sixty minutes. And there's a potential for AP, right, in, in our uh, field here, in our board gaming field. AP is uh, analysis paralysis. So sometimes, because it's a puzzly game, uh, on somebody's turn, they'll be sitting there counting vegetables and trying to figure out exactly what to do. So it, it can take a little longer, but, you know, if you're just having fun, uh, it's not going to go beyond an hour, even with four players, okay? Uh, so uh, it's uh, it's one of my favorites, and it's so beautiful, right? I mean, look at the art. Now I don't know if you've been to Reykjavik in Iceland, but if you have, please put down in the comments if it really does look like that, because I'm ready to pack my bags. You know, I mean, that is so cozy, and it's so beautiful and so cozy. I mean, look at that. I just I just want to move there. You know, I live in South Florida. I'm tired of the heat. Give me some cool weather. I like cool weather. Call me crazy. Um, so, gee, Alex, what do we do in Ray Colt? All right, let me give you some flavor text, and then I'll talk about the flow of the game. And this will give you a, a good idea. Here's the manual. And I do have a pet peeve with these giant, um, you know, I don't know why they have to make manuals so big. Granted, this one's got, you know, real nice art in it. But I just find it so, it's like reading, you know, like in, back in the old days, it's like reading like a big newspaper, you know, where you sit and you see your grandfather sitting there reading this huge thing. Who does that anymore? So, you know, these big uh, manuals, uh, you know, a little, a little cumbersome. Because, you know, when I was a teenager, I actually, you know, grabbed a couple of newspapers and, you know, read them, you know, like old school, you know, you sit there and you, but uh, I haven't done that in decades. All right, uh, flavor text. In Iceland, you can climb volcanoes. You can marvel at the Aurora Borealis. You can count sheep and eat delicious tomatoes. Thanks to geothermal energy, Iceland is a vegetable paradise. Did you know that? Uh, players take on the roles of vegetable farmers to build a livelihood in beautiful Iceland. But with all the tourism around the natural wonders, competition to have the best vegetables is fierce. So in the game, you're, you're, uh, I'll show you the board real quick. And you have, uh, you know, this is the, the solo and two player side, and then you have the three and four player side, right? I mean, it's just more, more options. Worker placement. You're going to be putting your, and I, and I love how there are stickers with, uh, with little people, you know, with people on it. So you'll be putting your worker on certain areas. That's how you're going to get things and vegetables and, you know, that's how you're going to get uh, greenhouses, right? You need the greenhouses because you need to plant your vegetables and then you're going to need to harvest them. Because uh, you're going to be uh, on a track here, right? And as you can see, you begin here. And, uh, and to, to satisfy that table, uh, you need one tomato, and then you need one lettuce, one mushroom, one uh, um, cabbage, one carrot, and then everything starts going to two. Huh? Two, 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 and then look at this, three. So as you go up the track, it gets harder and harder to meet the demand of those tables. So you're going to be putting your workers here uh, to uh, get greenhouses, to get some vegetables, because you'll need at least one to plant on the greenhouse, and then the rest of the ones come from the game stock. 
you got some special cards which will, you know, give you more vegetables or, you know, whenever you harvest, you can collect a carrot. It's just, there's a bunch of different uh, special cards and uh, they're all available here on the board. It just depends on where you put your worker. But let me tell you uh, briefly uh, what the flow of the game is, because that's important. I mean, it's a nice manual. I complain about the size, but you know, if you're sitting properly at a table, you can just spread this out. It's not a. It's not like you're going to be playing this on, on an airplane tray, you know. Flow of the game. Um, you play the game over seven rounds. Okay, if you're playing solo, I think it's eight rounds. Uh, I'm not going to confirm that, but uh, I think so. Um, so, during the first part of the turn. Everybody's going to do a work time. So on your turn, it's work time. That's when you get to place one of your uh, tokens in on the board, okay, to get stuff, okay. And then it'll be the other players' turns, and everybody will do that. And then it's harvest time. Harvest time means if you have vegetables in these greenhouses, you're going to take one of them out. You're going to harvest them. That's why you're going to have to have eventually uh, a few greenhouses with some different vegetables, right? Because you got to meet the demand of these uh, these tables here, right? So you're going to need to balance all that out. It gets, uh, you know, it's puzzling. It's puzzling. And then you have uh, tourism time. And that tourism time is when your, uh, your token, uh, or as they call uh, your manager, goes up the track here okay and then finally a homecoming which is uh, when you bring your workers that are out here you bring them back home and then you start another round of the game so uh, yeah you got work time you're placing your workers you got harvest time where you're planting uh, where you're harvesting right you're taking back the vegetables that you planted um, you got tourism time where you're meeting the demands of those tables on those tracks right on that track you need to the winner of the game is the one that gets further up that track in seven uh, turns <laughs> and it's uh it's puzzling it's puzzling you got to balance all that stuff out and then you bring your workers back you know and then you start all over again look at this isn't that a cute uh crate every vegetable has its own crate in this game and look at these vegetables these are these are lettuce I don't recommend you eat them, but man, look at that. I love that. And, uh, you know, there's uh, tomatoes here, you know. I love these wooden vegetables. Cabbage. Right. Um, I love these crates. Um, uh, look at the carrots. You want to eat one, but I don't recommend it. You know, they're, not, they're not edible. But uh, aren't they nice, these carrots? I, I love them. And you got more workers here, you know, like for instance, you see, different colors, right? There's a pink one, uh, there's another yellow one. So, uh, yeah, that's how you play uh, Rake Holt. Uh, I think it's, a, you know, it's a, it's a fun game. Uh, it's a worker placement game. It's a beautiful game on the table. It's a thinky game. It's a puzzly game. It's an enjoyable game. Right? If you like uh, Uwe Rosenberg, if you like puzzly games, family-friendly games, right? You can play with non-gamers. Right? You can teach them; they can play. Solitaire games. Ow! Oh, I bit my lip. If you like uh, so solitaire games, right? Ray Colt. Go get one. <laughs>